Hey everybody, we are back basically for part two of my adverse y'all video. Say that quickly three times. So um, I did a video about adverse y'all and got a lot of emails. But first, if you don't know who I am, I'm obsessed with giant scale airplane. The um, airplanes, the airplane in the upper um, right hand corner of your screen is the MSL2, 188 inch wingspan, 58 pounds, and sucks a glorious 160 amps of electric power on takeoff. So this airplane, I had a lot of problems with adverse yaw when I was first dialing it in. So if you didn't see my first video, I'm gonna recap really quick what adverse yaw is. So as an airplane's flying along happy and it's got blue skies, unlimited visibility, the barometric pressure's at 2992, it's a perfect day. It's just flying along, but when it goes to turn, it has to have ailerons come down. Well, technically you could turn on a rudder, but let's talk about using the normal controls of an aircraft. So as that aileron comes down, it makes this wing produce more lift, okay? Anytime lift is created, energy is used. That energy creates drag. As the aileron comes up here, it makes the wing produce less lift, which is less energy and is less drag. So as you go to turn left, which is right on your screen, the right wing creates more drag and that's adverse yaw. So you're flying along and you turn left and you're like, wait a minute, why is my no nose pointing over there? Sometimes you fly an RC model and you fly by your, and, and you're in a turn, you're like, why is my tail low? That top wing's creating more drag. So how do we tame adverse yaw? There's, um, I'll tell you how I do it. Um, and on full scale airplanes, some of them actually have differential aileron. If you look in the bottom, right hand corner of your screen you will see differential aileron which means for the amount of degrees it goes up the degrees that it's going down is less okay and the reason that is is when the aileron goes down it's pr producing lift which is drag you want as least as least amount of drag as possible the aileron going up is killing the lift and creating less drag so how do you do that on a model airplane so um on a model airplane if you have a servo on each um, aileron and a channel on each aileron. So let's say you've got channel one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, and channel five and six are your ailerons. You can go into channel five and set up so that the end point when the aileron goes down is less than when the aileron's going up, okay? So you want less deflection down and more travel up. So you would mix that. And I put my mixes on a switch because I like to do some aerobatics, not with the MSL, that plane in the upper right-hand corner. Um, but if I have an aerobatic airplane, um, I have the mixes on a switch. When I'm just flying around looking pretty to everybody, you, you, you want the adverse yaw under control. But if you're doing snaps or inverted or rolls, you, you don't need the mixing, okay? But, so you go into your, your radio, and most people don't know how to set up their radios to make their airplanes fly better, okay? I would, I would beg you to start experimenting just a little bit at a time. So the way I dial in uh, the MSL2 was, I basically told my down deflection to be half of whatever I had with the servo travel and I added 25% more up. So I'd fly through the air, and as I'm going through the turn, I'd see how, where my tail is. If my tail's still way down here, I would try to give more up deflection on the aileron. Now, if the ailerons wouldn't solve it completely, then you trim in some rudder, a couple of degrees, okay? So you would trim the rudder channel into your aileron, so when you're moving your ailerons, your rudder's moving a little bit, okay? Now keep this on a, a switch so you can turn it on and off. Because if you're getting into crosswind landings or slipping, all these cross controls can get a little wonky on you. But what happens if you don't have a individual channel for each aileron? You can still do differential ailerons. And the way I'll exp I'll, I will explain this is, think about the, the travel of your servo arm. So this is the pivot point, this is the arm, and it's gonna travel about uh, 30 degrees each direction, 60 degrees completely, okay? So if this is at 90 degrees to the plane of your aileron, when this moves 30 degrees, this is gonna move 30. When this moves 30, it's gonna move 30. But what happens if you set it over here, the arm? If you, you put it already at about 30 degrees off. Well, what will happen is, 
is when this goes up, you'll get a lot more travel. And when it goes down, you'll get least travel. So mechanically, you can go in there and adjust the push rod length and offset your, your um, servo arm on your servo to have mechanically differential travel. And it works pretty good. I used to do it on my Cubs when I was younger and I only had a four channel radio. I would put differential aileron into that. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, people. The length of the tail does matter how sensitive your differential, um, uh, your adverse yaw is. So if you've got a really long tail, it might take just a little bit of rudder in with your mixes and your ailerons to get your adverse yaw to go away. If you've got a short coupled plane like the, the GB, um, the rudder was sensitive because it's short coupled. So it took a lot more throw, but you, you needed to be very gentle on it. Keep in mind, the design of your tail has nothing to do with adverse yaw. It's only with the way that the ailerons are deflecting into the wind stream. Okay? So I hope this helps everybody understand. I'm going to do a video uh, here in the next couple of months on how to set up your radio to really tame your airplane. Okay? I don't know how many people have come to me and says, you know, my plane just doesn't fly right. And I'll fly it. And I'm like, what are you doing with your mixes? And they're like, well, nothing. I've got my Expos on, which was great because most people don't even use Expedentials. So I'd go in there. Now, now look, this is for scale flying, not aerobatics, okay? If you're a yank and banker and a twister and, and it looks like you're having an epileptic seizure when you're flying, you don't need any of these mixes. But if you're flying a scale like a Blanca or a Cub or a uh, Cetabria, or well, I shouldn't say Cetabria because those are somewhat aerobatic. I mean, still, a Cetabria has a lot of adverse yaw because of how big the ailerons are. So you still want to go in, same thing with the decathlon, which is basically the same plane, but um, you want to have those mixes on a switch. Warbirds, this is really important with big, like B-17s, big warbirds that have the ailerons out on the end of the wings, and they're usually pretty big because they're big and heavy. They have a massive amount of adverse yaw. So if you want to tame your, at your, your warbirds, you should, without a doubt, be doing these mixes, okay? So I hope this helps everybody understand how to tackle this. Keep in mind, you want less deflection down and more deflection up to get rid of adverse yaw in the way your airplane flies, okay? Now, lastly, I had somebody send me a pretty interesting thing saying, I love your adverse yaw, but how can I get my flying wing to fly better? Flying wings are a challenge all on their own, okay? Most of you, not all of you, most of you that have wings is like having um, an epileptic seizure you throw into the air and it just goes screaming around and they're spinning and they're, and I love it. I, I love watching them, but you're not flying very scale. But let's say you're, you want a wing to fly very scale. The differential aileron definitely helps on a wing, without a doubt. But if you really want to get a wing that flies perfect, you make split ailerons, okay? So each of your ailerons are split ailerons. So if you're going into, so forget this plane's got a tail for a minute. Just look at the wing. If you're going into a turn and this split aileron opened about 15 degrees, the amount of drag it's gonna produce here is what's going to keep that plane uh, not having adverse yaw. So if you've got a flying wing and you wanna design a servo in the top and bottom of the wing and have uh, basically your ailerons move like this, but they're split, that split becomes your rudder. And that's how you control the yaw of a wing would be having split ailerons, which would be really kick-ass. I've got a really cool design for one, but it's like eight designs from now, which means it will probably be 20, 30 before I even touch it. But I hope this helps everybody because look, everybody, 99% of the model aircraft out there that fly like crap is your fault. You've either screwed up the incidences, you've screwed up the CG, you've screwed up your throws, Airplanes like to fly, and most of them are sitting there with anxiety attacks saying, please don't set me up wrong and make me look stupid in the air. I mean, think about the emotional stability of your airplanes when they look like crap up there. They hate it. So I hope this helps everybody. Keep the emails coming. I don't use Messenger on Facebook. If you're on my Facebook, I get like 200 waves and highs and all this stuff a week. I love it. I just don't have time to answer all of those. So um, my uh, email is easy to find either here on YouTube or it's on my Facebook. 
and uh, like and subscribe. Well, actually subscribe. I don't care if you like my videos. Subscribe so you can see the updates. And if you've never visited my Patreon, go to it because that's where all my 3D and aircraft designs and I should say all of my aircraft designs and my 3D models I designed for 3D printing live. So rock on everybody. Have an awesome day and go fly and uh, be awesome. Take care.